right so speaking of this then um you guys need to understand that it says draw the pattern of magnetic field produced by current carrying um wire on the plane this so you want to put your thumb here and your fingers will curl like this okay so that would mean that the field has to be circles concentric circles they will grow larger as they go away so three lines or four lines you must make like this and oh we need to make it on like 2d figure i think 8.2 not 8.1 okay wait we have to do like this and then this make sure every circle is way larger than the other one okay free hand no worries about if they're bad but that's fine like this okay then then what you're going to do is you're going to see that in the next one it says two long wires like one has a current like this one has a current like that and they would automatically give you the equation that i told you and they say you got to find the magnetic flux density at wire q you want to find v okay so to find v you'll just use this equation so what do we need we need the magnetic flux density at wire q due to wire p so when you use the formula v equals to mu not i 2 pi r okay so mu not will be 4 pi times 10 to my 7 the current you need to use for p because we are finding the magnetic field density of p is it clear everyone that would mean the current in wire p was 6.2 so we can write 6.2 here divided by 2 pi and the distance between these two is 3.1 so i'm going to write it as 3.1 times 10 to the minus 2 because i got to convert this So what you get? Can you please do it? Hello, Mukshid. How are you? Okay. Then. Self four times ten is a negative five. Four point zero. Times 10 is to a negative five uh, te tesla, and then it says force per unit length. So the next thing you're going to use is you're going to use F equals to B I L, and you need force over length. So B and I. So B we just found to be this, and I is going to be the current in wire Q. So the current in wire Q was I think 8.5. So we're going to write 8.5. What you get then? Yes, please. Three point four times ten raised to negative four is to negative four. Ten raised to a negative four newton per meter. Then it says the wire P and Q are different in magnitude. The currents explain whether the forces per unit length would be the same or different. So it will be the same. The reason is that due to Newton's third law. due to newton's third law law the action and reaction will be equal and opposite so you guys need to remember that is it clear okay yes nadia Mukshid, Jaweria, welcome. Anusha, Dipesh, Aman, everything is clear. Manir, Manir. Aman, sir. Okay. Yes. Yes. 
then we have this experiment which we got to do this is a current balance okay, experiment you go by the first yes yes why not yeah. okay so the uh, current force experiment is very very important because the questions are going to be many in this so we're going to do that if you guys are done okay fine so first of all you guys need to understand that number one um, a magnet is placed on top pan balance okay so initially switch is open so no current flows and reading on balance is made zero now why do we want to make reading on the balance zero because we don't want to include the weight of the magnet itself then what you do is you close the switch so switch is closed and so current flows in the rigid wire the wire needs to be rigid the reason is that if it can bend then the experiment would not give you the correct you know um, results then what you do is due to fleming's left hand rule the wire experiences a force upwards and how do i know this you can do this with your left hand rule as well so your index finger will go like north to south the current will go here so middle like this so thumb will be up so it means that the force on the wire will be upwards okay then 0.5 due to newton's third law equal and opposite force will act on magnet okay and where would it uh, act downwards number 6 this will show reading on pan balance that is equal to electro magnetic force that there is all right is it clear everyone you guys understand the experiment now the detail i have drawn on in in the diagram this is the kind of detail you need to draw in paper 5 if they give you the question okay make sure that you your drawing uh, has everything included like a variable resistor ammeter just to control the current and uh, check the current you have to have ammeter battery switch and stuff like this okay you need to make stands you need to make sure that you write uh that it's a rigid wire and stuff like this okay when you're ready uh i want to go forward yes Um, sir, uh, what if they ask us to find like using left hand rule as you mentioned, uh, if we are supposed to find um, in which direction the force is exerted, um, won't we take like a conventional current or something like that? Because battery, um, like the other way. Yes, we are taking conventional current because this is the positive sign. This is the current. 
No, the other way. From minus to uh, in the in the original diagram, no, no. it will be like from minus to positive. No, no, no. You you need to remember that left left hand rule, okay, is only for conventional current. It's not for that. If it's for like if they say you need to find where the electron gets a force or feels a force, then whatever your result is, you just need to make sure that it is like opposite of it. Understood? Yes. Okay. Then this is a question where they say like in the, the same thing it says with the direct current switched on the reading of the balance is seen to decrease. Okay. State explain the direction of force. So if the reading of the balance is seen to decrease it means the force on the magnet will be up and the force on the wire will be down. Do you understand? So it says state and explain the direction. So you're going to say force is exerted upwards or, or downwards. Downwards on wire as wire exerts equal force upwards on the magnet. And next thing, you are right that due to Newton's third law. All right, uh, the force exists due to Fleming's rule. Left hand rule. Is it clear? You gotta write this. Now they say check the current where the current might be. So you have to see. Your index finger should be like from north to south. The force in the on the wire is down. So which means your thumb should be down. And if your thumb is down, then the current on my hand is like this from B to A. Do you get it? Check it if you can do this, please. Your index finger like this, your thumb like this, right? So your middle finger should point like this from A to B, uh, B to A. Everybody, uh, everybody can do this. So then you will write due to Fleming's left hand rule. Direction of current. will be from B to A. If you have any confusion, please do let me know. Sir, in the first part, do we need to serve Fleming's left hand rule? Even if you don't, they will accept it. Because they just want to, they just want that you to state and then why there's a force. Because they said balance reading is decreasing. So that's why, it's fine. You can skip it. Okay. But to write it, it's also good. I mean, why, why leave room for the examiner to cut your marks? Okay. Then um, it says, okay, this is um, from alternating current. So just skip it from now, uh, do it later. We've done alternating currents, no? No, we haven't. So do it later, please. Anyway. Um, then this is for you as homework because that's the same question okay so we're gonna move from that to a free charge now um, when a charge is moving like in an infinitely large so let's suppose this is infinitely large magnetic field now you guys need to understand that a cross would mean that the field is into the page okay so field is inwards and suppose this is the velocity of the particle 
and the charge is Q, say positive. So if you use Fleming's left hand rule, your index finger should be pointing towards the screen you're looking at, your middle finger should be like this, and your thumb would show the force which is upwards. That is the reason that the charge will actually turn this way. So if this is A at B, now index finger towards the screen, your uh, middle finger upwards and then your thumb will point this way at this point also it will make a turn and then index finger towards the screen middle finger like this and the thumb is going to be like this and then in this path it's going to be like index finger towards the screen middle finger downwards so your thumb should be towards the right and if you see it's basically causing it to go in a circular motion is it clear everyone? So, yes, sir. So in this sort of uh, thing, I just want to tell you a couple of things. Okay, so I'm going to move. I'm going to write it here. I don't think we have so much space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to this side, I think. And then do we have space? Yes. And then I'm going to write a few things here. So you guys remember this. So we're going to say according to Fleming's left hand rule, um, charge positive Q experiences force Tanjim, very bad. So late. So, charge to experience force upwards. Then, when it due to, okay, so you'd write as magnetic field is perpendicular to direction of movement okay like that force changes direction and uh, of the velocity vector because each point there's a you know velocity is like tangential to it that's fine continuously as force is always acting towards the center of circle so you guys need to remember that okay So we can actually comment here that the magnetic force provides centripetal force. So now, so we've learned that the magnetic force is given by F equals to B I L. Let me change the color. This is what we've learned up till now. And if I say, if I write it as, you know, B and current as charge over time, because the, there's only one charge times L. So what do you see here? Length over time is what at any point? What is length over time? You guys don't know? Velocity. So that would mean that for an isolated charge, it will be BQV because we can, you know. Sir, uh, it is distance by time, right? So. Yeah, length is distance. No? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it no, will be. I was saying that uh, no. I got confused. It's alright. Now you understand. So then, yes, sir. this is the force. This is uh, magnetic flux density. This is charge 
and this is uh, velocity okay you guys need to remember this now for an isolated charge we're going to use this and then for a moving charge we can also derivate it furthermore uh, with respect to centripetal force and this is very important and mostly this will come so we say that the magnetic force is being provided uh, is providing centripetal force because it's going in a circular motion now magnetic force is bqv and centripetal force is mv square over r v and v will cancel out so it will be bq equals to mv over r and r will be mv over bq and this is a very very important formula where in this formula this m is the mass okay this color is this color sucks v is the velocity uh, b is the magnetic field strength and q is the charge and r is the radius of curvature is it clear now can you guys tell me one thing what is mv you guys know momentum 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 yeah so it is momentum which means radius of curvature is dependent on momentum which means that for example if there is like an electron okay let's let's talk about proton just to make it simple so proton will have a smaller radius of curvature with the same amount of speed but if we look at the helium nucleus which is basically four times the mass so it will have a larger curvature because it has four times the mass and the greater momentum so the greater the momentum is the greater the curvature is going to be and obviously uh, it's just like comparison to this you're like moving a sports car in a circle and a truck so obviously a truck needs a higher you know radius to turn is it clear all right munib nadia and uh, satish and yes, aman dipesh juwaria everything is clear yes, sir. okay pretty good yes, sir. okay pretty good you guys have written it should i go forward now yes sir okay then if something is moving in a in a gas so obviously there is going to be resistance and resistance will cause the speed to be slowed down because we are looking at radius of curvature as mv is equal to bq so if the velocity is going down the radius will go down that is the reason it will go in a spiral and it will like slow down to one point but if there is vacuum in vacuum because the speed doesn't change so forever it will keep on moving in a circle okay i hope you guys understand this now there are two important things that you guys need to remember first of all that force uh in magnetic field is only experienced by moving charges if the charge is stationary it would not force uh, it would not feel any force and you can know that f is equal to bqv that's why but compared to this force in an electric field is experienced by moving and stationary charges so you got to remember that okay so that's the difference between these two with respect to charge okay any questions please let me know
okay so then um yeah let's go forward then what is meant by uh, magnetic field so this is a sort of question magnetic field is a region where a moving charge experiences a force perpendicular to the field because it's always perpendicular you got to remember that now then it says state the direction of magnetic field now it's a positive charge and if you look at this this turns here it means when its velocity was this vector the force was this vector and now we're going to move like uh, your middle finger should be up your thumb should be like in this direction so your index finger is coming out of the screen you can twist your hand so it means the field is out of the page please let me know if you could not do this please let me know I just need to I don't know why but it's not sort of oh okay then it says explain why the speed in the particle is not affected by the magnetic field because you guys need to understand that the acceleration is always towards the center that causes the direction to change but not the magnitude as the force is perpendicular to magnetic field the speed value always changes when the force is in in the direction or against the direction of velocity if it's perpendicular then it never changes it just goes in the straight line with a circular motion right just like this so do remember that let me know if you guys have a question okay then So can you explain this again? Yes. Radhika, if there's an object, right? And it's going in this direction. If you apply force in the direction of velocity or you apply force against the velocity, then the magnitude changes. If you apply force perpendicular to the velocity, it will only change the direction, not the magnitude. Do you get it? Yes. Sir. Just like that. anyway then it says show that the diameter of the circular motion circular path is given by the expression now this is the same thing uh, nothing really uh, different all you need to do is you need to say magnetic force and the circular motion are equal centripetal force so it's going to be b q v equals to m v square over r this cancels out so r will be m v over b q since r is diameter by 2 so diameter by 2 will be equal to mv over bq so d will be 2 mv over bq you get it shown the same derivation we have done is just given diameter instead of radius so that's all about it okay then we're going to go to this one it says show use the expression b to show that the time spent in the field by the particle is independent of b so that's pretty simple <clears throat> if you um, notice the whole thing you see the expression that we have just found out is uh, r d 
equals to 2 mv over bq okay so then if you notice this uh, the mass is constant the speed really changes but in this formula there is no time so the diameter diameter that's changing the diameter is basically proportional to the velocity right and if you just look at it you realize that velocity is basically tangential to every <coughs> like every point here okay so because the magnitude never changes right only the direction changes so that's why it would not change uh, the time do you understand this you guys so magnitude of velocity is changing not the magnitude of the velocity is changing but not the uh, mag magnitude velocity is not changing sorry but only the direction okay so that would mean that obviously it's not going to give you that anyway the other thing you can do is to show all right to show that how this would change is that when you use this you need to understand that uh, the time period like um, we can basically do if you notice this is the circular motion like this so the distance uh, would be like 2 pi r over the time period would be somewhat like omega right because this is like half of this so can i write it like a pi r over t f equals to omega can i do that please which basically means basically substitute this value like r is d by 2 right so let's write r instead of this mv over bq and if i put it here mv over bq this will be tf equals to omega so tf will be equal to pi mv over bq over omega like that so why omega and because uh, i used like i need to use tangential velocity for this right well, I used uh, the, uh, the radial velocity, but uh, we can also do it with tangential velocity. Let's do that. That's basically easier than this to explain. Wait. So I would say that time period, time of this F will be basically the distance. This distance is like pi and r because the total distance would be actually 2 pi r this will be pi and r uh, i can actually write because r is like d by 2 so i can write as uh, pi d by 2 right so can i say it would be like pi d by 2 divided by velocity because it's distance over velocity right is it clear now if you notice this is going to be tf equals to pi d over 2v 
and we know d is like uh, 2 mv over bq we can substitute it here so it's going to be pi and 2 mv over bq divided by 2v and v and v will cancel out so ultimately tf and 2 and 2 will also cancel out so it is going to be pi m over bq so it is independent is it clear like that any questions now Nadia, Mukshit, Muneeb, Javeria, Danjim. Yes. Okay. That's right. Yes. For part B of the same question. Part B, yes? Yeah. Could you explain that again, please? Just the part one. Out of the page, yes. You see, what I did was... Sorry? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to explain this. If it's like going in this direction, this is the velocity direction at this point, right? Yes. And if it's turning like this, then the force is this way. You agree? Mm -hmm. So, if the force is this way, and the velocity is this way, so it should be your middle finger here and your thumb should be here can you place your left hand's middle finger up and thumbs to the thumb to the right Is there any, uh, okay so then your index finger should come out of the page so that should be the magnetic field do you understand which is Thumb should be on the right, middle finger is upwards. Yes, and your index should be coming out of the page. Yes, sir. Left hand? Like, I would uh -huh. say, if this is your hand. Yes. Right? If this is, can you put your palm? Like palm should be facing towards, uh, say, um, palm should be facing like upwards from your screen. Is it facing upwards? Okay. Like your yeah. palm is here, right? Upwards. Okay. And then your thumb, yes. thumb yes, should be on the right. Is it? Uh, is it on the right? Yeah, so I just flip my palm over. Yeah, yeah. So where is your index finger then? Yeah, here. Index finger is pointing straight. It's pointing towards you. It should be pointing towards you back. No? Oh, okay. Do you understand? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah but so you have to make the same sign. You can't change the finger's direction, okay? Like that. Okay, then uh, this question, um, that's, the, that's a very simple question. I would like to give you this as homework. Uh, just try to do this. Make sure that when you're doing this, you have to make sure that the direction of velocity should be perpendicular. So you have to take components, right? So if this is 30, this will also be 30. So V will be V sine 30. That should be the uh, direction of velocity. It should always be perpendicular to this, right? That's why. So do this and you will be able to do this. Just write that comment. And then uh, this is also the same type of question. You can do it on your own. I'm sure of that. Very easy. Anyway, so then we are going to go towards Hall Probe. Hall Probe is basically a... Yeah. So Hall Probe is basically a uh, thin slice and it senses magnetic field blah 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 i just want to tell you that uh, there are two conditions for using this number one condition is that magnetic field must be perpendicular 
to the slice slice is this okay this is the slice it is made up of semiconducting material all right and so when you're using this the equation for this is you use you send the current from like one phase from here to here as you can see and the voltage is taken from the other top faces like other two so the equation is the hall voltage which is vh which you get here is bi equals to n q t you can also write it as bi equals to n e t and that would be the same thing okay because q and e is the same thing the charge on an electron okay where i just want to tell you important stuff vh is called the hall voltage that i'm going to explain how we get it n is the number of electrons per unit volume it is also known as electron density okay and then um i in this is called steady state current and t is the thickness of slice and uh, b is the magnetic field strength perpendicular to slice okay like that now so for this question there is going to be a 6 mark maximum 6 mark maximum question and you got to learn how to write about it so we're going to do that in a bit first you copy this and let me know if you're done interesting mm -hmm. Okay. You got it, guys. Not recording. That's not fair. Today my internet is so bad. I don't know what to do with it. Let me check. So now it is, but then in the middle it stopped. Okay. Today I have no idea why it's not working as intended. and okay okay for the first point we say according to fleming's left hand rule there is a force acting downwards on incoming electrons now let me show you how so electrons enter from here uh, sorry on the other side like this so when the electrons enter you guys need to understand that from a to b perspective left hand rule shows that the magnetic field is going like this right it's going like this so you have to put your hand so uh, the field is into the page here like this and the, when the electrons enter your your middle finger should be like this so we the current is like this right so if it goes here middle finger should be like this 
uh, index finger towards the page and the thumb is upwards because these are electrons so the Fleming's left hand rule only works for positive uh, current mm -hmm. because it's negative so the electrons will basically start to feel force and get deposited on plate B so they will feel a force downwards you can check with your uh, hand as well okay okay then what happens is the second mark would be when you write the the magnitude sorry the magnetic force will cause electrons to be deposited onto face B which is uh, here right like I've seen here so electrons will start to come here like this so now the upper face A will become positively charged relative to face B because there's so many electrons here so this will become it will start to become a po relatively positively charged face okay now due to this build up of charge on both faces an electric field will be created so which means now with this an electric field from positive to negative will be created here now that's the most important part that I want to tell you now if you notice because these are electrons so the magnetic force will be downwards but the electric force will like the face A will attract it so electric force will be upwards now so point 4 you can write this will cause increasing potential difference to be created okay between the two faces anyway now fifth point electric force will increase on incoming electrons and ultimately both forces will balance out so which means the magnetic force will be now equal to the electric force the magnetic force is bqv electric force is uh, eq as we've done it before okay now six point hence electrons will achieve a steady state of flow of current that what it means when I wrote steady state current that this is what it means and will provide a steady hall voltage and the reason is that now the electrons will just go straight like this they will keep on going straight because the forces are equal so now they cannot go either way and they will just keep on going straight this is the steady state current they're going to achieve and obviously the potential difference across the two forces will give us a steady voltage that's hall voltage all right any question please let me know
אוקיי. סטודנט? This is called cross fields. The reason why it is called cross fields because if you see... Yes. Yes. Could you please show the first book books? Yes. The reason it is called cross fields because the electric field yes. is like going down. Like this is the electric field. And the magnetic field is 90 degrees to the electric field. So that means that these are like making cross 90 degrees and this is why from the front it looks like this. All right. Anybody has a question, please let me know. Javeria and Nadia Mokshit Aman, Gati Kamani. No, sir. Okay. So, Muneev, you're done. Should I go forward? Yes, sir. Hmm. So, the next question it is saying that you got a. Fine. Uh, there's a thin slice of conducting material. It has uh, has it faces P, Q, R, S, and V, W, X, Y, normal to magnetic field density, as you can see. And now it says use the letters in Figure 9.1 to name two faces where the Hall voltage is developed. So as you can see, the magnetic field is like this. Electrons are moving like this. So you're gonna put your index finger down. This should be your index finger, and your middle should be this way. So you'll see your force, your thumb will be this way. But that is only true for positive current. And because the electrons are negative, so electrons will deposit on the other side. So this will become positive. So it means the faces that the whole voltage will develop is between this and this. So that's going to be PSVY and QRXW, like that. And state explain which of the two faces name is more positive. Obviously, it's going to be PSVY and due to um, Fleming's left hand rule. Like that. That's it. You're gonna uh, get the two marks. Okay. Finally, we're gonna go towards the next thing, which is um, this one. It says the whole voltage is given by this expression. Uh, explain the letters what is meant by T. So T is the thickness of slice. So we need to identify from the figure. Uh, use the letters. Oh, okay. It has to be SY then. SY, RX, Q, W, whatever you want to write. Okay. Then what is meant by N? So you will write electron density. Or you can write electrons per unit volume. Okay, it says state and explain effect any on the polarity of Hall voltage when negative charges charge carries electrons with positive charge moving. So polarity will be opposite. Polarity will be opposite. As now positive charge carriers will deposit onto opposite face oh wait 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 sorry 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 no no it will be same as the positive charge carriers will deposit onto the same as force direction remains same so this is a tricky question and the reason is if there were positive charges then still they would come to this side because the force is this way as the current direction and the magnetic field direction is the same all right is it clear everyone Have a look at it and let me know if you have a question here. So you mean that faith still remains positive? 
yes it will it will still deposit on this side and the reason is because magnetic field and current direction stays the same so it doesn't really matter right you get it yes sir okay please write this down and let me know if you have a question now let's go to the next one so this question is the same you just need to use that so homework for you people same goes homework and if you don't understand something do let me know okay all right now so this question is basically it's saying that you need to find uh, you need to uh, tell us why a uh, hall probe is made from a thin slice of material okay and in this case if they say something like this what you're going to do is you're going to say that thin slice of material like you can write it from here okay so for two marks if i were you i would basically um say that Uh, the semiconductor, the hall probe is made from a semiconducting material, and uh when basically the current flows so the slice with thinner dimension would provide a higher hall voltage all right now you can build upon this by using vh is equal to um n qt and you can see that where you can write where vh is inversely proportional to the thickness do you guys understand this please let me know if you get it hello sir then it says in order for consistent measurements of magnetic flux density to be made the current in the probe must be constant and the reason is again hall voltage is directly proportional to current so it will only be accurate when we achieve steady state current all right so it depends on this is it clear everyone let me know if you have a question finally as you can see that they have shown that the hall probe is being rotated like this and the next thing they want is they want us to sketch the graph okay so what you guys need to understand is that magnetic field from the solenoid is going to be generated like this right so the magnetic field should be perpendicular to the hall voltage a hall probe if you want to give it the maximum uh, of the maximum value which means that 0 degrees it will be parallel and at 360 degrees it is going to be parallel so
zero degrees and uh, yeah so it means that wait zero degrees would mean that this is like it's taking angle from this side right so we're going to take it this way don't worry so which means that when it is rotated from this point when the whole probe is like this so it is rotated from zero degrees when it is exactly in front of it and then as you go on when it goes 90 degrees to it it means the field will be going like this when it is zero degrees the field will be like this it's going through it like that it means that at zero degree and at 90 degree they will be exactly like at 90 degrees or 180 degree they're going to be zero um, flux or interaction and when at zero degree or 360 degree there's going to be maximum interaction that would mean that we're going to put nine zero at 90 and we're going to put um yeah and we're going to put sorry uh, zero uh, we're going to put zero at 180 not 90 sorry and zero here and i think it should be like maximum at zero so here you will put it here and it will be like i think a sinusoidal wave something like wait a second it will be not zero zero at 90 and 180 it will be like this 270 it will be zero and 360 it will be like this so it should be like it should be like this and this and this like that is it clear everyone So I don't get this. Okay, I'll explain it again. So Gatika, when the field, field is like this, you see the field is like this. So Hall probe is like this, right? So it's all going through this. So at this angle is zero. Do you understand? So ninety. No, the angle is taken from the start which is like when it is detecting something and then you are moving it to 360 we are only talking about this not the angle from the field you get it? okay and when it is going to be 90 degrees it's going to be like this so it's rotated by 90 degree do you understand? so if it's rotated the field will just go like this so it's not interacting it means at 90 it is going to be 0, at 0 it is going to be maximum. You get it? Yes. When it reaches 180, like it further rotates, so it's going to be like this. And again the field is going through it at 180. So it's going to be negative and maximum. And then at 270, it's going to be flat again, so field is going like this. And at 360 it will just be as 0 was. So that means it will be zero here and maximum here so it's going to be something like this understood so there is no change at 90 and 270 yeah because then the field is going to be parallel that's why okay okay who did not get it Muneeb, Nadia, Javeria, Aman, Moksha got it sir okay then the next question is uh, what is meant by a velocity selector so velocity selector it says how a uniform magnetic field um, and electric field may be used as a velocity selector for the particle so what you're going to do is you see you're going to make the same diagram that i made for the cross fields first so cross fields basically look like this as you can see so there has to be like a positive charge on one plate and negative charge on one plate is it clear and then there has to be a magnetic field so this diagram where the magnetic field and electric field are 90 degree this is called cross fields is it clear so you can basically show that this is connected to a positive terminal this connected to a negative terminal and maybe you can also show it like this sorry 
Do you guys understand this? Now, why do we call this as a velocity selector? Because when the charge particle enters, all right, so whatever charge particle it is, so the electric field and the magnetic field are going to act of in opposite directions. You get my point? Okay. So now we're going to say that magnetic field and electric field are equal. So magnetic field is going to be BQV equals to EQ. And you might see EQ and EQ cancels out. So the velocity of uh, charge is going to be a ratio of magnetic field, sorry, electric field strength over magnetic field strength. Do you guys understand this at least? Please tell me if you have a question here. Have a look at it, please absorb this and let me know. Okay. Can you explain again? Yes. So what I'm saying is that um, when you have cross fields, like, you know, suppose this is a plate that is positive. Okay. And there's another plate just below that is negative and it's connected to sort of circuit like this. All right. So yes. the field, electric field is going to be from positive to negative uniform field. You agree? So that's why not negative to positive. Electric field is always positive to negative, Peter. That's why. Okay. Yeah. Fully understood this? Now, if a charged particle enters, let's suppose it's positive charge, where will it feel the force? Down or up? Electric Downward. force. Downwards. Okay. So electric field force is going to be downwards. Now, if I apply a magnetic field into the page, can you tell me where the force of the magnetic field is going to be? The force of magnetic field. Yeah. Also, also what? I don't know. It will be upwards. You can use uh, uh, the uh, the left hand rule, right? Index finger towards the page, middle to the right, upwards thumb. You get it? Okay. Yes. Now, what you what you need to understand is that the two fields perpendicular to each other. causes a force in opposite directions, right? Yes, sir. On moving charge. Now, if the particle needs to go straight, what is the condition then? To go... That the force should be equal? Yes, to go undeviated, the electric force should be equal to the magnetic force, right? Yes. So the particle speed matters and that is the selected velocity. So how do we find this? Because electric field is EQ and magnetic. The magnetic field is BQV. So EQ and Q cancels out. So the selected velocity, which is V, which means this is the velocity at which electric field strength and magnetic field strength uh, basically the ratio of these two will cause it to go undeviated and that would be the velocity at which it does. Understood? Because magnetic field depends on velocity, right? That's fine. Yes, sir. Understood. 
So you need a specific velocity at which the particle can be sent inside the field so that it goes undeviated and that's why it is called a selected or velocity selector. Understood? Like that. So you, you gotta write, just write this and draw the diagram. Any questions anyone you guys have? Okay. Then in the next, it says that a sphere of mass this and charge of this this way is a uniform electric field act vertically upwards, as you can see. And it says that the force exerted on sphere by the electric field causes space to remain at fixed position. Okay. Height from the horizontal. Fine. There is a uniform magnetic field in the region of electric field. The sphere moves at a speed of 0 0.78 in the horizontal plane. The magnetic field causes the sphere to move in a circular radius as they have shown it to you. Like this. Okay. Then they say determine the direction of uniform magnetic uh, uniform magnetic field. So uh, the the sphere is moving in this direction, right? Is it clear? Uh, sorry, the electric field is like uh, this way. So in the electric field, if the electric field is like coming out of the page, it means uh, electric field is going from positive to negative. So electric force will be also force will be out of the page. What do you guys say? Wait a second. Let me read it again. So this is a positive charge. This is a positive uh, section. This would be positive. This would be negative. Okay. So the electric field is causing it to force upwards. Is it clear? So now from the top side, it's saying if this means that the field in 3d drawing is like this, this is a sphere and the field is going like this. Do you understand? So that means if this is positive, this is positive and this is negative. So force will be in this direction. Do you agree? Like out of the page. Yes, you guys. Any questions up till now? Please let me know because this is the newest question. So I just want to make sure that you guys understand it fully. Okay. Then it says that... Um, determine the direction of uniform field now it says it causes it to go in the circular motion because it is like it is like a positive charge and the path is like this it means the force would be towards this and the direction of the velocity is like this so the thumb should be up the index finger should be like the middle finger should be here so index is inwards what does that mean so the magnetic field should be into the page. Do you guys understand this? So can you explain the electric field part again? Yes. You see, it says this is a positive charge, Gatika. Uh, Gatika. Positive charge, right? That means that if this is a positive charge, an electric field this time is shown out of the page, which means electric field is going this way. Do you understand this? Okay. Out of the yard means that this would be positive side, this would be negative. That's why it's going from positive to negative. You agree till now? Yeah, right. If the charge here is kept, this charge, which is positive, where would it feel the force? The same direction as the field lines, because it's positive, right? Do you understand this? Yes, sir. Any questions? Here, up till now? Okay. Now, so then it says where is the magnetic field acting like it says determine the direction of uniform magnetic field okay now it's going in this path you see this path yes sir. so the only way it can move is because your uh, index finger your uh, your middle finger should be in this direction where it is moving
right now and your thumb because it's moving this so every force should be towards the center force is like this you agree yes sir so if it is like viewed from above it's viewed from above so it means that the magnetic field should be downwards you know like down like you're viewing the whole because thing because electric is upwards no forget about electric field you're viewing this from upwards and this charge is moving this way do you understand so it means the magnetic field should be into the page from our view it should be downwards do you understand towards the page yes kartik so i'm trying to understand again so i don't get this okay again so you have velocity going the velocity vector is this and the force should be this way that is the reason it is turning you guys agree place your yes. thumb place your thumb upwards and your index finger to the right can you do that oh, sorry middle finger to the right can you do that yes where is your index finger into the page into the page now if you're viewing yeah. this from above where is the magnetic field then downwards or upwards from your perspective mm. Mm. yes please So how can we say downwards or upwards? Upwards, right? No, it's it's into the page, right? Into the page. So if you are out of the page, are you using your left hand or right hand first? You tell me that. Left. So why 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 is not into the page? Middle finger here. Place your middle finger. Place your thumb upwards. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Done. Where is your index finger? Done. Into the page. Towards the screen or away from the screen? Huh? Oh, you're talking about okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes. yes. Index finger towards towards the screen, right? Yes. What you're looking at? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Now, if this is like if you're viewing from upwards, don't you think so? It is into the page. It's into the page, right? Yes. If it's into the page and you view it from above, so it means the magnetic field is going from above to below and below is downwards do you understand this um, okay yes gatika do you understand yes sir i got it so basically you're like you're like looking at it from above and the field is like this you understand like that and the charge is going like that got it Difficult question. Huh? Then explain why the motion of the sphere is horizontal, plane is circular. The plane is horizontal, and why is it circular? So you can say magnetic force. The force is acting towards the center of circle. Okay. which causes constant centripetal force understood like that now why this question is a bit difficult i'll tell you why now you see although the magnetic field is trying to push it down because uh, like the magnetic force is this way it's going circular but the electric field was basically i told you the electric field was causing it to move away like upwards do you understand from this electric field is upwards is it clear magnetic field is not aligned with electric field now it says calculate the strength of this if a charge is being forced upwards by uh, electric field why is it staying in the horizontal circle when magnetic field isn't even helping it because it its weight should be down do you guys understand this Yes please Again I'm telling you 
that was that was acting towards the circle right magnetic okay. force and electric force are not aligned this time this is the tricky question that's why i included this so electric field is going upwards so why is it balanced in the horizontal frame is that the weight should be downwards and electric field is upwards so they are balancing which means electric force should be equal to mg electric force is eq equals to mg and now you need to find e so you got to do mg over q now they have given the mass as 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 10 the gravitational field strength is 9.81 and the charge on the sphere is 0. <coughs> 27 nano nano is 10 raised to minus 9 yes what you get do you guys understand this is a very new type of question that's fine 5.8 5.8 okay fair enough then says by considering the magnetic force on the sphere show that the flux density of the uniform magnetic force is this so you know that magnetic field is causing it to go in uh, centripetal force right so you're going to cancel this so r is equal to mv over bq now we're going to use this the mass is 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 10 the velocity of this is uh, 0.78 magnetic uh, sorry and magnetic uh, magnetic field is b and the charge on this was 0.27 times 10 raised to minus 9 and the radius of the circle was 3.4 can you find b please I think it should be the same, but you can try. Point one four. Point one four. Tesla. Is it clear? So do try this question like um, again. And in the next class, we're going to quickly finish this uh, chapter and then we're going to move to the next one. If you have still any question or doubt, please let me know. This question really needs a simulation to be done. Very hard one they gave this time. I'm sure people would have failed in this. I'm sure about that. Okay then, I hope that's clear. If you have any more questions, let me know. Otherwise, you guys are good to go.